Welcome back. All right, in our next installment of the Euler line, what we're going to do is try to find the Euler line given some equations. So here we go. Uh, I want you to find the vertices of the triangle formed by the equations x equals negative 1, y equals 2, and 3x plus 5y equals 37. After you find the vertices, I also want you to write the equation for the Euler line. All right. First thing I want to start with is a sketch. And here we go. x equals negative 1 is a vertical line where all the x ordinates are negative 1, and all the y's can be whatever. Uh, y equals 2 is a horizontal line. And 3x plus 5y is a line with a negative slope, because if I put in 0 for x, I would get y to be greater than 7. About, and then, of course, if I put 0 in for y, I get x to be, what, something like 12 or something, you know, bigger, right? So that'd be kind of negative. All right. Now, right away, I notice that these two are perpendicular making this triangle so much nicer for you and I. Uh, if it's perpendicular, this point's easy to find. That we, we know that because that is x equals negative 1 and y equals 2. And that is a right angle because the slopes are uh, negative reciprocals of each other. And also, that is the orthocenter. So we're well on our way to finding the Euler line, the equation of the Euler line, because I have one point. I only need one more point. Now, what I need to do now is find these two other uh, intersection points. Let's just start up here. And up here, x equals negative 1, and it intersects with 3x plus 5y equals 37. So well, we're going to take that x equals negative 1, plug it in to that x right there, so that's x negative 1 plus 5y equals 37, right? That's negative 3 plus 5y equals 37. Add 3 to both sides. 5y equals 40. y must be equal to 8. So that point now we know is negative 1 8. Now we go down to here and we know y is equal to 2. So I plug in 3x plus 5 times 2. I always add my parentheses. Equals 37. 3x plus 10 equals 37. 3x subtract 10 off both sides equals 27. x must be 9. So that point is now 9, 2. First order of business done. I have three points. Now, for the equation of the order line, I have the orthocenter. What I need is, where in the heck does it go? Well, in the last video, if you were paying attention, you know that for every right triangle, one of the points is always in a special spot. Do you remember where that is? Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick. Ah, yes. It's at the midpoint of the hypotenuse. It is on, and if you did the extra credit on the last one, you'll know. So somewhere right there uh, is, so it's the midpoint. So now I've got to find the midpoint of 9, 2, and negative 1, 8. And this is what we did at the beginning of the year. I know it's got to come back to you. You know what it is. So, so what we do is it's x1 plus x2 divided by 2, comma y1 plus y2 over 2. Right? That's the midpoint formula. So the x's would be 9 and negative 1, which are 8 divided by 2, and 8 and 2 divided by 2 is 10 over 2. But I don't want to leave it like that. That, of course, is 4, 5. So the midpoint now is at 4, 5. 
And if we remember when, what point is that? That's the orthocenter. That point is equidistant to every vertex. It's equidistant to the midpoint of there, and it's also equidistant to the, to the vertex here. That, of course, is the circumcenter. And we know from last time that the circumcenter and orthocenter are always on the Euler line. So if I can make an equation that goes through those two points, I am done. So let's do that. First off, I guess I need to find the slope between those two points. That's going to be, uh, of course, a y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 is 5 minus 2 over 4 minus a negative 1, which plus. So that's 3 over 5. So our slope is 3 fifths. Now I can write it quickly using the point slope formula, y equals 3 fifths, choosing uh, either one of the points. We can do, uh, I don't care, let's do 4, 5, x minus 4 plus 5. There is my equation for the Euler line. Ta-da! Okay, so I'm back on the GeoGebra um, website, and I wanted to show you something. There, if you open up, you can you can this little box down at the bottom. You can put your equations down here. So I can put in my x equals negative one. Hit enter, uh, and you see that it shows up right here. The line that x equals negative one. I can also type in y equals uh, two, and I can put them in, in standard form also, 3x plus 5y equals 37. Much better than all of those. Now, see if I can uh, zoom out a little bit here. Oh, maybe I can move this around. There we go. All right. So now I'd like to still... Um, Put points at the intersections. One, two, three. And now look at that. It showed me the points that we we knew were the correct answers. There's negative one, two. There is the point of negative one, eight, and nine, two. So I actually was right. And of course, I can this one, I think I can find the, well, let's go ahead and make a triangle. We'll make a polygon, and since I've already had the points, boom, boom, boom. There's my triangle. And now it, it actually measures the lengths of all the sides. It tells me the area of the triangle. How cool is that? Um, I can put a midpoint on a side, and there, there's that point. Uh, did I do it right? doesn't look like I did it right. Let's go do, undo that. Let's do a uh, midpoint and let's just choose the two points we want. Yay! That's the point that we thought that was the midpoint. And the line we want, there's a line that goes through there to there. That's my order line, right? Um, uh, maybe I can... Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, look at that. It gave me an equation for that line. Now, it did put it in standard form, but it gave me an equation of the order line. So, that is pretty powerful and quick stuff. Of course, I'm not going to let you use this during a test. But if I did, I'd have to ask you much harder questions. All right, look at this one. I have a triangle here, and I've set it up so that it's not stuck on one point, right? I can move it around. Um, oops. Um, move. Um, and so it actually can move up and down, but I'd like to put it on nice... Points and here we go. Let's take. Oh, I'm off. By okay, so zero five five two. Blah, 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 blah. And at this point, I'd like to find the centroid. And the other day we found the centroid. We know that's the center of balance. And if I get the midpoint, 
which is, I keep on forgetting where it is. There it is. So the midpoint of this one and this one, there's the midpoint, and the midpoint of this one and this one, and I can then make my medians, right? that go from here to here and here to here and then I can put my intersection at where those two medians meet that is my midpoint so let's see that's F right and F looks like it's at one and two and one-third yes so that's kind of important two and one-third now what's really cool about this is I can move this right and then if I move this down here to zero four now f is at 1, 2. What I'd like to look at, notice something. Can I get a relationship between a, b, c, the ones right here, and f, which is the point of intersection? There's my centroid. So how can I get from 5, 0, 5, negative 2, and end up at 1, 0, 2, and 4, and end up at 2? Huh. wonder what I can do. Move that around. We'll pop to a point there. Now I've got negative 2, 5, 0. I end up at 1. And 0, 0, 4. And I end up at 1. And it's rounding to 1 and a third. Do you know the answer yet? We'll pop it over there to 0. Now, 0, 0, 5. I end up at 1 and 2 thirds. 0, 0, 4. I end up at one and a third. Hmm. I'll try to make this. Let's, let's see if we can make it even better for you. Can I do it? No, I didn't. Dunk. Maybe now? Yeah. Zero, 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 three. I end up at one. Zero, zero, six. I end up at two. Notice something, right? The centroid, if I know the coordinates, will always be the x values added up divided by 3. 0 plus 3 plus 0 is 1, and 0, 0, 6, and a third of that is 2. It's basically like you're taking the average of those three points, right? And if you think about it, that's not too bad, because what am, what am I dealing with? I'm dealing with the midpoints, right? The midpoints of the sides to the vertex. And that is the center of balance. How cool is that? All right. We have covered a lot today, but one of the things that you got to remember is the centroid formula. So let's write it out. The centroid formula, the centroid of a triangle ABC where A is at X1, Y1, B, X2, Y2, and C, X3, Y3 is at x1 plus x2 plus x3 divided by 3, comma, y1 plus y2 plus y3 divided by 3. And so it's otherwise known as the average of all the x's and then the average of all the y's, right? All right, get ready to do some algebra tomorrow, and I will see you soon.